let us see an overview so try to compare the different type of shocks so we are going to see the popular four types of shocks are hypovolemic shock cardiogenic shock neurogenic shock and septic shock so we are just going to cover them up overview so we can write that uh, this is suppose hypovolemic shock so we have hypovolemic shock then we have cardiogenic shock then we have neurogenic shock neurogenic shock and then we have something which is known as septic shock septic shock so let us try to understand these things now what is the basic parameter that we are going to see the first basic parameter is what about heart rate you know that the heart rate is going to increase in cardiogenic and hypovolemic and also in case of septic shock except neurogenic shock why neurogenic shock? there is central loss of sympathetic tone so that is a case where you get to see bradycardia the next very important thing is what about the respiratory rate when you talk about respiratory rate what are the important things it is going to increase in all except the neurogenic shock now this is again very 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 important the next parameter is what about the extremities now this is what is very 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 important so we can say peripheries so when you talk about the peripheries or the extremities there is rule of shock what is that save the organs save the vital organs so blood is actually siphoned off from the peripheries and shunted to the vital organ so in peripheries there will be increased vascular resistance and that is why where there will be vasoconstriction because of vasoconstriction less blood so cool extremities so always remember what kind of extremities you get to see cool extremities in both cardiogenic as well as hypovolemic shock and this is because of vasoconstriction now what is the contrarian happening in neurogenic shock in neurogenic shock you want to do this but actually there is central loss of sympathetic tone so the extremities have increased compliance not resistance so in this case capacitance basically in this case there is vasodilatation and because of vasodilatation you have warm extremities what happens in septic shock now this is again tricky initially now i will write here initially because of the effect of toxin the extremities are warm why because of the lipopolysaccharides or tachoic acid released by the bacteria so i can say that because of bacterial toxins and later it is cool so if you see a patient of hypovolemic shock and a late case of septic shock and if i don't reveal that yes there is a component of infection here you will not be able to decide what is what this is what is very 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 important next is we will continue this so let us see on this case hype on this side hypovolemic shock then we have cardiogenic shock then we have neurogenic shock and then we have septic shock so let us continue this let us see the other parameters so we have seen the respiratory rate we have seen the heart rate we have seen the peripheries now the cvp what is cvp central venous pressure now cvp is decrease in hypovolemic decrease in neurogenic decrease in septic shock what is cvp students the jvp the jugular venous pressure that you actually see now try to understand in cardiogenic shock what is the problem the heart is not able to allow or accommodate this flow which is coming to the heart from a vena cava so obviously there is a backlog or a traffic jam at the level of the right atrium and thus the cvp or jvp is increased in this case now this is again very 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 important point the next thing that you need to understand here is the concept of sepsis in which variety do you get to see sepsis negative 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 and it is this septic shock which is plus plus again there is one very important parameter so of late it has been asked in lot of exams i have been teaching it from last 5 6 years requesting teaching students that yeah this will come and recently we got to see that in one of the exams but yeah here i am replicating it for you that is what is the concept of mvos for this wait for some time i'll cover this mvos in detail but let me tell you it is defined as mixed venous o2 saturation so what is the gradient of oxygen returning back after being circulated in the body this can be seen if you see the blood which is coming into the heart via vena cava so when you check the oxygen saturation of the blood returning back after a complete circulation at the level of vena cava 
or you can say at the level of right atrium this is what is known as m vos actually we see right atrium but we actually don't measure we measure it at the level of pulmonary artery so we put a swans gans catheter and at the level of pulmonary artery you check what is the saturation so from vena cava to right atrium then right ventricle then into the pulmonary artery so pulmonary artery being easy accessible and controlled way so we go for that so m vos if you talk about it's low in case of ongoing cardiogenic and hypovolemic shock but it is high in case of neurogenic and septic shock again i would tell you that yeah the basic readings are when you call it low less than 50% is considered low and more than 70% is considered high so wait for 5 minutes i will explain you in depth what is that now when we talk about the management so management in nutshell this is again very important when you talk about hypovolemic shock don't worry this is not the end of the chapter so don't get panicked so i'm just giving an overview so when we talk about hypovolemic shock it is fluids and you need to understand when you talk about fluids this is what is very important that you give crystalloid so fluid of choice is crystalloid and along with that plus minus you can also go for blood transfusion so crystalloid plus blood is that is what you need now when you talk about cardiogenic shock what is very 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 important here in this case there is a concept of fluid restriction so fluid restriction remember in case of cardiogenic shock the input is equal to output plus 500 why this extra 500 because of the insensible loss so fluid restriction but here yeah, you need a motivation for the heart so inotropes so fluid restriction plus inotropes this is again very 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 important when you talk about neurogenic shock yeah you require ample of fluids so along with fluids you require inotropes so can you see the difference in one category you require only fluids in one category you require fluids also and you require inotropes septic shock when we talk about the classical management it is simple and clear you require a lot of fluids yeah this is clear plus antibiotics and along with that plus minus the inotrop so this is what is very 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 important so try to understand this was a brief overview of shock